Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and today I'm taking a look at the Fubot. The Fubot is a smart air quality sensor that measures things like volatile organic compounds, particulates, uh, carbon monoxide, humidity, all the things that can have an impact on the air quality of your home or of a space. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get in there. It's all still covered in cellophane. I have to admit, I looked at this and I thought I like the company that deals with this because on the bottom of the box it says, don't look at my bottom. <laughs> nice touch. So, let's get this all off. Okay, so the sides of the box does talk a little bit about the sensors and the technology. So we've got uh, the gas pollutants here, particulate matter, um, gas pollutants are typically things like uh, what they call volatile organic compounds, formaldehyde, benzene, all uh, little nasties, of, uh, and carbon dioxide is often called the uh, the silent killer, as they say. Is it the silent killer? I can't remember. <laughs> and we've got particulate matter, so that might particulate matter, so that might be things like uh, pollen, dust, uh, pet dander, stuff like that. Temperature, well, we all know what the temperature is about. You can have Celsius or Fahrenheit. Humidity, if the room is a room is too damp, there's the danger of mold growing and getting bacteria on walls and things like that. Uh, obviously, if it's dry, it can just affect the comfort of your home. In terms of carbon dioxide, uh, it doesn't actually have a sensor. It drives it from some of the other sensors in it. And uh, obviously, being a smart device, what this can do is that it can uh, measure everything in your house record that information and you can see it on a uh, on an app on the smartphone. Um, going through some of the promotional things, the, the actual uh, Fubot unit changes colour depending on what it detects in the air. Blue is good, orange is bad. So there's some info, yeah, so there's the it talks about the coloured light. Yeah, and you can obviously get historical uh, um, information and of course one of the other things is that if as this is a smart device it integrates with some of the smart home tools like uh, Alexa and I think uh, the Google Home so you can ask or you can get information from it and with tools like IFTTT you can hook it up to other smart devices so perhaps if uh, humidity is getting too high you can uh, instruct um, instruct for you can ask for a window to be opened things like that or you could have your air conditioning come on it all really depends on what you've got. So there's just a couple of stickers along the bottom here, which I shall take out with a pair of scissors. So I think that should be us. That's it. Now there are there is a complimentary app. It's available for both uh, iOS and Android. <laughs> yeah, I do like these guys. Okay, so opening up the box, there's the food pot itself. It's a, a little bit bigger than I was expecting, actually, but there we go. So let's just get the stuff out of the box. Right, so there's not much in the box, as they say. So we've got a the Fubot itself, which is uh, USB powered. We have a USB charger, which is uh, this is obviously a continental one. Um, Fubot, I or I think it, I can't remember the name of the company is actually I think it's Airbox Labs. They produce it. So Airbox Labs are a Luxembourg-based company, if I remember. Um, so, well, this is I've been sent a obviously a continental Europe one that has the two pins. I would imagine if you do order one, for, uh, it will come with a UK plug. But probably best to check and getting a getting adapters next to nothing anyway. And you may well have a preferred USB charger in the house anyway. So in the box, yes, you got the you got a an owner's manual here, and you have a Fubot a quick start guide. Now. I aren't, I'm not currently in a position where I can attach it up to uh, 
to the internet, so we'll have to do that a bit later on. I'll come back to that. But let's just see if I can get this uh, get this plugged in and see whether it it glows nicely. Let's just hold on a second here, because I do have a USB charger over just over here. If I knock the camera over, there we go. Right. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, I, 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 hopefully you can just saw that colour as it turned on. Not sure if you did. Yeah, there it is. There you can see it now. So uh, it's beginning to boot up, and at this point here, I need to fire up the app on the on the uh, tablet or the phone, and get it all uh, synced up to the Wi-Fi. And so, well, just to, I guess to, I, I will come back and tell you how I got on with this. Um, just to go over some of the other details, if you're interested in more information, it's Fubot F O B O T, just as you see in the picture here, which is Fubot. I think it's Fubot.io on the web. It is available from uh, for America and EU and also the UK. So the North American price, I believe, is 199 US dollars. It's the same figure in euros at 100. 99 euros and I think that will roughly be about 170 GB pounds depending on the exchange rate. Uh, you can, if you go to their website there's much more information, there's a couple of videos on what it's uh, what it offers. So I'm quite keen on this, I'm looking forward to trying it out. Um, I do have a room or two that uh, I'll be interested in to see what the humidity levels are like and whether I can do anything about that. either through just opening the window more often or whether they're doing anything smart with my smart home. So that's it for now. This is Andrew for Geek News Central. I'll pick up after the break. Thanks very much. Hi, this is Andrew and we're back with the Fubot, the smart indoor air quality monitor. So I've been playing with the Fubot really for about the past two weeks and it's been interesting to, to say the least. So just to review, setting it up was straightforward. Um, you download the app from the App Store and really just follow the instructions. It has quite a nice setup feature where you have to turn the, the Fubot upside down to, to kind of tell it that you want to pair with your Wi-Fi and things like that. So the Fubot does actually have to sit in the same place, or at least roughly the same place, for about six days to let everything settle down. And it's only really after the six days have passed that you can start to get uh, reliable information from it. You, you can get information from it, um, but you're kind of warned that it's still within the initialization mode. So here's the Fubot. You can see it all lit up. It lights up blue when the, uh, if you like, the air quality is is good, and it'll go orange when the air quality is bad. I'm going to try uh, simulating some some poor air quality by breathing deeply into it, and you'll see the orange. You can also see the app here is uh, is down here. And just before I do that, you can I'll tilt it up so you can just about see it, so it's currently telling me that my air quality is great, or it's just changed it to 19, it's probably because I'm breathing within the area. It really is very sensitive, we'll come on to that in a minute. And uh, we've got the we've got the uh, um, humidity here, we've got the temperature here, and we've got, there are three bits here, there's what they call particulate matter, which is effectively dirt in the air, and then you've got volatile compounds, that's chemicals, and then you have this carbon dioxide figure. Now, Fubot are quite up front, there isn't actually a carbon dioxide meter, it kind of extrapolates the, the carbon dioxide from some of the other the other measures. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and uh, breathe deeply on it and we'll see if we can get everything to go orange. Hold on for a second. There we go, so a bit of heavy breathing and get it to go orange. The screen goes, um, screen goes orange here as well and you can kind of see the, uh, it's kind of pinky here, but in real life it's very orange, and you can see the air quality has gone to 100 for poor. Now it will start falling very relatively quickly, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get back to the blue, so it's already back to the blue already. Uh, the humidity went up as well, I've also got hot breath. The other thing you can do is if you tap on it, it'll actually send uh, a, uh, if you like, a current set, a set of settings to you. I'll see if I can do that as well. It was purple to tell you that, um, and it just go back. And on the one of the uh, one of the Fubot apps, it'll kind of pop up very shortly with a, a current set of information. So I mean, that's really all the Fubot does. It doesn't do, do a whole lot. It, uh, I guess I should also mention there is integration with um, Amazon Alexa, so I can basically say to Alexa, 
uh, what's the air quality like in the room and it'll uh, come back with great, good, poor, that kind of stuff. You can also turn the LEDs on and off if you want to uh, to to well, turn them off or turn them on again. There's not much to it. Okay, so let's just have a quick look, run through the app. So you've obviously just shown you um, some of the basics. Um, hopefully we can just bring this over here so that we don't get too much reflection. So as I said, you, you know you can tap on any of these things to get more detail. So if you go into there, it'll show you just the volatile components. Over to this side, you can shoot it, see the particulate matter, um, and you can sw swipe to side to see any tips. And if you want to go back to the, the main thing, you just tap in the middle. Down here, if I can, it'll actually give you a historical pattern. You can choose minutes, hours, days, and weeks. And I think what uh, really surprised me was how much just people being in the room can have an impact on the air quality. So. Today we were out, um, and uh, if you like, this here we can see overnight in the room, nobody about, air quality is really very good, two, smaller the number the better. We get up, we, well it's Sunday, come on, got up late, you can kind of see a bit of a blip here, and then we went out really for the afternoon, we went, to, we went swimming because we're ever so healthy, and then we were back just a little bit after four o'clock and you can kind of see this peak as you know we're in the house and we're doing stuff and currently it's a it's at a bit of a, a peak here just around nine o'clock um, as I do this do this video um, and as I said you can uh, choose different uh, different metrics if you want to look at hours or days and go back historically sometimes uh, Fubal actually asks you what was going on here so you might have been a uh, good example you might have opened a window or you might have uh, started vacuuming stirs up the dust and uh, it notices this jump up very if, if it has if you see if it sees a very quick sudden jump it'll actually um, send you a little message and say what happened here and you can say well was I cleaning did lots of people come into the room um, have I been painting have I been cooking those kinds of things and it allows you to record those so um, it's uh, it's it, it's kind of interesting that it learns um, what's going on Um I guess what else there is there to say um, there are some settings. I'm just hopefully not going to. I'm not going to all details because I think I can look at some of the stuff without uh, revealing any personal information. But you can do uh, various bits and pieces like uh, you know where is the the foobot located, what time zone they're in, how bright do you want the LEDs to be, do you want the LEDs to to turn on and off at certain. You know, there's no point having the LEDs on overnight, frankly. Um, what I tended to say is just have it on during the day. Comes on at nine in the morning goes off at nine at nine at night. Um, you can over as I said you can override that through um, Alexa just by telling it to turn on the LEDs. Okay. So what we're going to do now is have a quick look in Samsung Smart Things. There's no official integration with Samsung Smart Things. Um, it's an unofficial uh, community provided one. I haven't had any problems with it at all. Uh, it's really it's, uh, it's good. It's very simple to do, you just have to follow the instructions on some of the websites. So let's see if I can just get straight into smart things without revealing too much thing. So here's my living room, go into Fubot, and uh, it tells you all the details within uh, smart things, really pretty much the same as the Fubot app. Um, you can obviously then use some of these senses, sensors in other things, you know, for rules within your smart home, and uh, it works quite well. You can't get it, it doesn't do constant polling, I think you can have something like 200 polls a day, which is probably every 10 minutes or something like that. So for really what you're trying to achieve here, it's perfectly acceptable. So back to the Fubot itself. I mean, there's not much more to say about this. Um, in terms of cost, I think it's $199 or 199 euros. It's available in the US, Europe, Australia, places like that. Um, is it worth it is, is one of the questions. I think if you had a child or a relative who um, suffered from poor health such as asthma or um, other breathing conditions, I think it would be a really useful tool because you could probably start to track is there an impact on of the environment on the condition. You know, one of the things that's really hard to know is 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 my my son's or my daughter's or my asthma brought on because it's dusty in my room or is it because um, there's uh, there's strong fumes or from paint or something in the 
in the room and it's really really difficult to to make a, a logical argument if you don't have the information at your fingertips and a tool like the Fubot actually gives you that information I mean I, mean, I totally admit that for a healthy family with no uh, no breathing issues or anything like that it's hard to justify a case but I think if you do have somebody in that instance says uh, you know, 199 euros um, probably is a relatively good investment I certainly I mean I can't comment on the the scientific accuracy of the devices certainly the uh, the temperature and the uh, humidity sensors were in the the same kind of area that my other smart home devices were saying the humidity and the temperature ought to be so um, I've no reason to believe that the other sensors in the device wouldn't be as, as good. And the other thing is that it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, whether it says 286 micrograms or whether it says 300 micrograms isn't actually that important. What it What is important is what, that it shows you trends, it shows you when things were good, when things were bad, those kinds of things. So um, it's, it's very easy to get hung up in the, you know, is it accurate to the nth degree? It only has to be good enough. Um, so I think you know I think that's important to bear in mind. Um, if you want to, if you do want to know more, um, the the website I think is fubot.io, and I think you actually have to use HTTPS to get to the website. Um, it doesn't like uh, just a good old-fashioned HTTP. Fubot.io, so you have to have the HTTPS in there. I'm sure a search on Google will find it quickly enough. Anyway. Um, that's about it for the Fubot. Uh, so, I mean, what more is there to say? So, $199, dollars 199 euros. Uh, I I enjoyed having it in my home. I think it's fun. Uh, at least it was fun from my point of view. It could be a serious tool for somebody who does have uh, an ail a breathing ailment or uh, something along those lines. So, uh, I think we'll just sign off at this point. So, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, reviewing the Fubot, the smart indoor. Uh, air quality monitoring tool. <laughs> Thanks very much.